everywhere, and especially here at the Space Pavilion. Hi, I'm Kelsey Brennan Wessels, and welcome to the ESA Web TV coverage of the 2018 Berlin Air and Space Show. The opening day of ELA saw the release of the richest star catalogue to date, based on data from ESA's Gaia mission. An announcement for all the scientists and all the people in the world that want to look at the data is now time to open our archive. And guys, enjoy it, and I'm sure that there will be a lot of more exciting science that will come in the near future. The data include high-precision measurements of nearly 1.7 billion stars, revealing previously unseen details of our home galaxy. We need this information in order to uh, disentangle basically the formation history of our own uh, Milky Way. That's one of the main goals of Gaia, although it has applications in basically every branch uh, of astronomy. Um, and the idea is that uh, we think that the Milky Way was formed through the um, uh, merger of many small dwarf galaxies into one larger galaxy, or at least part of the Milky Way we think was formed that way. And what we want to do with Gaia is we want to go and look for those building blocks of the Milky Way. German Chancellor Angela Merkel paid a visit to the Space Pavilion on the opening day of ELA and was greeted by ESA's Director General Jan Werner, along with ESA astronauts Samantha Cristoforetti and Matthias Maurer. During the encounter, Jan presented the German Chancellor with a model of the Ariane 6 launcher, and Samantha gave her a miniature book of poetry that she had taken with her to the International Space Station. As Matthias has yet to go to space, he promised the Chancellor that he would bring her a gift after his mission. The Space Pavilion also saw visits by Peter Altmaier, the German Federal Minister for Economic Affairs and Energy, as well as representatives from Germany's lower house of parliament, along with delegations from France and Norway. From varying political conditions to dealing with big data, Representatives from space agencies and industry kicked off the 6th ELA Space Day with a discussion on the challenges that face space activities today. They praised international collaboration in space business and discussed the importance of European autonomy in accessing space with launchers like Ariane and Vega. Finding digital solutions to handle the vast amounts of data coming from spaceborne missions is also among the priorities for agencies and industry, as well as the integration of these data into economy and society. On Wednesday evening, an event was held to celebrate the launch of the Sentinel-3B satellite from the Plutsev Cosmodrome in Russia. We have just launched Sentinel-3B successfully. I'm so relieved, such a good moment, because now with Sentinel-3B we have seven satellites in orbit, seven satellites in orbit, and this is the first phase of our Copernicus missions. Great relief, great success. Congratulations, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Sentinel-3B will join its twin, Sentinel-3A, in orbit. The satellites are part of Europe's Copernicus Environment Monitoring Program and each carries a suite of instruments to systematically measure Earth's oceans, land, ice and atmosphere to monitor and understand large-scale global dynamics. Sentinel-3 also provides essential information in near real time for ocean and weather forecasting. We have science in all our activities, whether it's in applications, Earth observation, navigation, telecommunication, space science and exploration launch, new launch systems, operations and technologies, but also safety and security in and from space. In all of the different fields, science is there day by day, and therefore science is everywhere. We will continue to bring you the highlights from ESA at the Berlin Air and Space Show, so don't forget to keep an eye on our website. Thanks for watching.